Hello, I'm Katie Manning, and I played Joe Grant in Doctor Who, later to become Joe Grant Jones in the Sarah Jane Adventures, and you're listening to Mark Who 42. Mm, isn't that the answer to life? Welcome to the new Mark Who 42. That's right. Next week, we will be starting with episode one of Life, the Hooniverse, and Everything with Mark Who 42. I'll be one of your hosts. I'm the creator, Mark Baumgarten, and welcome to this episode zero, our regeneration episode, as it will. Basically, on this episode, which we're putting out there, is our interview with our final guest on, well, not our final guest because it was someone at the end, but our main final guest of our last episode that we did live on April 1st of this year, April 1st, 2018. His name is John Davey, and he uh, does a lot of the monsters and other characters on Doctor Who. It's going to be a great interview. It was a great interview. And because it wasn't out there too long, because we uh, closed our RSS feed and all the Mark Who 42 episodes disappeared, we thought for our regeneration episode, our episode zero, we would replay the interview with John Davey. So here it is. We're going to be adding John Davey to our show. John has been featured in 42 episodes of Doctor Who to date over the past 12 years. <laughs> And the various wow. monsters that he's played are Daleks, Cybermen, Ood, Jadoon, Whisperman, and a unit soldier. He's also performed and assisted with choreography in Doctor Who Live back in 2010, Doctor Who Proms 2013, and the Doctor Who Symphonic Spectacular in Australia back in 2014 and 2015. He's also featured in Rogue One. He was in Star Wars Rogue One, guys. Whoa. Uh, he was in Torchwood, Sarah Jane Adventures, Merlin, Wizard vs. Aliens, Casualty. Oh, yeah, well, less said about Casualty. And Atlantis in uh, various roles. <laughs> His other work includes being a camera operator and still photographer. This guy has worked on projects like Big Brother, X Factor, He's worked with Robbie Williams. You guys know who Robbie Williams is, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Good singer. Uh, he Sam's doesn't, on MTV. He doesn't know that. Yeah. He, he's worked on music videos for Radiohead. And he worked as a lighting cameraman on an animated sequence in the Simon Pegg movie, A Fantastic Fear of Everything. This guy is I mean, more than just like I've been posting the man behind the monsters of Doctor Who. He's had a life. Mr. John Davey. Hello, John. Oh, yeah, I'm here. You do have me. We have you. John, I'm Mark Baumgarten. We met at Galley One. Uh, I was the one who we invited, certainly you, did. invited you to the show, and I'm so glad that you came on and uh, are doing this with us. Yeah, yeah, no, it was great. Let me introduce our other podcast mates here. We have Eduardo M. Fryer. Ed... Nice to talk to you again, Mr. Davey. I also met up with you at Galley. I was with I was with Mark during the um the, the cocktail and you know, I know that I, I came by your table the next day and cool. told you yeah, don't yeah. yeah, yeah, told told you don't worry, you weren't you know, you were you were fine the night before. Uh, well, I don't know whether I was or not. There's very little that I remember about the uh, the nights <laughs> in the Marriott at Gallifrey one. It all uh, oh, becomes a bit of a blur. <laughs> was that from all the from all the imbibing that was going on uh, downstairs? Yes, Upstairs, yes. Rather. Well, it's, it's it's sort of spending eight eight hours kind of uh, on it, and all of a sudden having a load of drinks, and it sort of um, all becomes a blur. But it was all it was all great fun, and obviously, you know, every Doctor Who convention that I go to, Whovians 
do seem to like to get drunk, so uh, it's, uh, <laughs> we do. It's not, it's not it's just, just an American thing. thing. It's, it's, it's the same back in the UK as well. I went to a convention for the uh, the franchise GI Joe, what uh, right. the one that's known as Action Force in the UK, and yeah, the the guys there. One after hours, it's you know, yeah. There's there's some there's some imbibing there too. Uh, there's also going to do karaoke and taking pictures and threatening to blackmail people with the release of said pictures. <laughs> nice. I think I think one of the craziest um, experiences I had was uh, um, a friend of mine uh, used to put on a convention um, in uh, Exeter in the UK, and mm-hmm. uh, basically there'll be a load of co- uh, colonial marines and um, someone in an alien suit sat in a hot tub drinking beer <laughs> oh my God. okay all right I hey like <laughs> okay we we have uh ed's wife uh who was one of the co- co-founders of this show six years ago uh patricia fryer hello hey, how are you? i'm very well thank you zion uh, heroes is here too zion say hello to the man hello hey. mr davy how are you doing today I'm doing very well, thank you. And you? I'm doing pretty well, thank you. Cool. Where where are all of you guys based? Okay, uh, I am based in South Florida. Zion is based in Orlando, and Ed and Trish are in Nevada. Nevada. Am I saying oh, that cool. right, Trish? Yes, Nevada? Reno, Nevada. Neva- Nevada. 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 Yeah, she gets, not Nevada. She's bad no. when I pronounce it wrong. Well, it's a local thing here, yeah. No. People get upset. Cool. John, I got to tell you, I don't know if we told you, this, besides this show being live, this mm-hmm. show is our last show for a while. We're 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 going into the wilderness years, just like Doctor Who did back in 1989. <laughs> you are officially our last guest. So thank am you. Am I the John. show I'm the show closer, then, am I? You're closing the show. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, I just realized that. Yeah, I guess you're the show closer. Uh, <laughs> okay, it could always be worse because, you know, you could be like uh, Michael McDowell, who did a Star Trek movie and for a while was known as the guy who killed Captain Kirk. So, <laughs> Yes, that wouldn't, uh, yeah, that wouldn't. Yeah, we don't, well, we, yeah. yeah. So you're, you're not killing Mark Who 42. This is a conscious yeah, decision. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> worst, you know, wor- worst, worst case, you know, we could always edit it, so instead we uh, fall off a bridge. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we can wake up, uh, we, we go into uh, the bathroom and, oh, there's Mark Who 42 in the shower. It didn't actually oh, end after all. Oh, 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 shower oh, retcon. Ah. Uh, I, I, Dallas was a good show until that. Uh, yeah. They destroyed that, Dallas. Didn't it, didn't, that, wasn't there some other ludicrous storyline as well? Um, was it before or after that? Well, what, the Who Shot JR? No, no, no we, it was obviously the whole kind of like, it was all a dream thing. But I think well, right, right. They did... Some, I don't know. They, I think they did something else. They've done a, done a lot. Bit, they, bit they, jump they, in the shark. Yeah, they well, jumped well, no, in the I, shark. Well, I, I know that. I know that for the series finale, they had kind of a takeoff, and it's a wonderful life. And it turned out that uh, with Jr. and it turned out that the person who was speaking to him was the devil. And it ended in this cliffhanger where Jr. pulled out a gun, and you heard a gunshot. I don't then, remember it, that episode. I probably didn't. Yeah, see that. I knew there was. Some, well, no, well, no, the rest of some really ludicrous. Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> well, no what, what what was ludicrous though was um was when they brought Dallas back and they had you know Jr. back. They explained that what happened was the gunshot you heard and mm-hmm. you know uh, having uh, Patrick Duffy come in and go, oh my god, Jr. shot out a, a mirror. It's like, oh, okay, wow, all right, so, huh. So the, uh, the the writing Emmy award goes to <laughs> yeah. In this case, not you. Not you. <laughs> so, John, for people who don't know who you are, and, and tell a little about yourself so that the audience can learn a little about you. I've done and I do quite a lot of things, but one of the things, and predominantly the reason why I'm here, is that. I've uh, been playing many of the monsters on Doctor Who since 2005. I think I've, I think I've added it up right, and it's 42 episodes. So that that's perfect. In. Mark Who 42. We end with someone who's done 42 Doctor Who episodes. 
Was well, it, that was all planned. You know, they did offer me uh, a role on the new season, and I thought, you know what? No, I'll turn it down because it's, uh, you know, there's some nice serendipity going on here. Thank you, John. <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I start started on the show um, in season two, playing one of the Cybermen in the uh, four Cybermen episodes, mm-hmm. and um, <clears throat> I kind of accidentally got it. There was a there was a casting where uh, fifty guys turned up and were all similar height and build, and we spent a day uh, with the Doc Two choreographer, a lovely lady called Elsa Burke. And uh, we spent a day uh, marching around and walking around with our eyes closed and doing a lot of other uh, weird, strange things. Uh, And then we were told this is an audition to be Cybermen on Doctor Who, Mm -hmm. which, you know, was amazing. Then, obviously, we were told you can't tell anyone. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, oh yeah, you, right, can, okay. you can tell people that you were on our show. By the way, you can tell people. That. Oh yeah. So uh, our next stage was to go uh, and try the costumes on, which were made by Millennium Effects, mm-hmm. uh, that make pretty much most of the co- uh, monster costumes for uh, for Doctor Who and uh, many other things. So we went up, and it was a case of if the suit fits, then you get the job, and um i managed to uh squeeze into the suit and um <laughs> uh, yeah ended up doing uh, about 32 days on um on the four side man episodes in uh series two um oh. little did i know at the time that i would then be asked back to do most of the other monsters uh since yeah you you've been an ood a jadoon a dalek you've actually yes. given the dalek casing yeah well the um um before before I did the Daleks, um, I did the Cybermen um, and also the Ghosts um, in the uh, Army, Army of Ghosts, Ghosts. as well, the, yeah. the Silhouettes. The Ood, uh, the Hev- Heavenly Host from the Voyage mm-hmm. of the Damned. I played an Atmos worker in the Sultaran Stratagen. So we got where... to see your face. You you did have the uh, the the glory of um, beholding my face. <laughs> um, uh, basically, I'm stood at the um, end of a corridor where the cloning chamber is, and a couple of uh, unit soldiers uh, come up to me, and um, I, I get given one of the greatest lines in Doctor Who. I'm stood by a door, the door opens, and I say, "It's open." So, come on. Way to go, man. Let's let's give a round of applause, folks. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then, yeah, then I played played the Hath in The Doctor's Daughter, the Jadoon in Stolen Earth and Journey's End, um, uh, Cybermen in The Next Doctor, uh, Winders from The Beast Below. Uh, yeah, and then the Daleks. So um, that was in Victory of the Daleks. Mm-hmm. Um, so we uh, we got called into the uh, the BBC studios, and uh, we had to give up our mobile phones as well. It was all very cloak and dagger. And uh, we uh, we then uh, met, or, I've, I've, or I met before um, uh, Barnaby Edwards and uh, Nick Pegg, that were the um, the main Dalek operators uh, in the previous episodes mm-hmm. and uh we had a, a day of dalek 101 training um you know making sure the movements are are correct and they're actually um they are actually quite tricky to actually maneuver um you're you're sat inside the dalek on a little piece of wood which is supposed to be a seat but it's literally just a piece of wood mm-hmm. and the dalek consists of one wheel at the front and two wheels at the back, and you pedal it around a bit like Fred Flintstone. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's all very, very low tech. Um, they, not motorized. You, well, the the problem is, is if you have five Daleks and the motor breaks down on one Dalek, you can't film. So right. it's kind of you know the simplest solution is the best. Um, what Daleks do have a tendency to do is that they, if you pull them forwards and so the the back starts coming out so you have to make very small steps and then if you feel the back kind of compensate on the uh on the other side Mm -hmm. um it's perfectly fine in a studio on a concrete floor but um occasionally i have done it outside which um 
can be uh, can be very problematic. So yeah, I was the orange Dalek, the Dalek ever so popular Paradigm Dalek series. Oh um, yeah, those Paradigm Daleks. I'm sorry you had to wear one of the one of the orange ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I was so I was so happy when they decided. You know what? We're not going to do these Paradigm Daleks. We're going to go back to the Daleks. Cause... Yeah, well, those original, um, you know, bronze gold Daleks, or still are, beautiful. And yeah. I guess the story was, you know, bigger and better Daleks. They were bigger, <laughs> but not really better, I guess. Well, yeah, um, but don't make it look like it's the Power Ranger Daleks. I they mean, were the... you know, they were the I'm, Power I'm Rangers. I'm sure there was a, possibly a marketing angle maybe that you've got five different things yeah. instead of buying one different thing but i don't know who knows so yeah so that was a, that was fantastic to actually um be be a darling was shot in an old uh tobacco factory in cardiff mm-hmm. and it was uh basically a giant steel room which was a which was a humidor um and it got very very hot um oh. and I think they probably left us in there for about three hours. Oh. Um, it, it was getting yeah. hotter and hotter. And uh, I just thought, oh, that, you know, this is awful. And, and I wore a long sleeve top and a pair of, pair of uh, jogging bottoms uh, because, obviously, the, the inside of a Dalek has got lots of bits of fiberglass that you could skag yourself on. Um, so uh, eventually when they said, um, oh, we'll get the guys out of the Daleks... Um, me and a couple of the other guys basically were just sat there in our pants, our underpants. <laughs> so when you watch that scene, there are, um, you know, potentially three, three guys in their uh, in their underpants actually doing that scene in the Daleks. I will never watch that episode the same ever again. <laughs> <laughs> you have changed my whole ad episode. <sighs> um, but yeah, that so that was. That was, uh, um, you know, a, a great, um, you know, a great moment to have actually been a, been inside a Dalek on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, oh, and another qu- quite funny story about that is that when the Daleks make their entrance, um, there's like a big kind of flash and a load of smoke, and um, they decided to bring the Daleks up up a ramp, which was very difficult to kind of get the momentum to keep going up. Um, but with all the smoke, um, we could hardly see a thing. So on the first take, uh, they said, Daleks go. We went up the ramp and unfortunately the, uh, the, the Daleks have designed the doors on their spaceship about two inches wider than the Daleks themselves. Oh. So if you were, if you were one inch, one inch to one side, you wouldn't fit through the door. So we all go, we all go flying up, and um, the Supreme Dalek, the white one, which I, I can't remember whether it was Barney or, or Nick, basically couldn't see where the door was, got stuck on the on the door frame, and then all the other Daleks just kind of shunted up behind. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we made a suggestion about putting a chalk line on the ramp, um, so we were actually looking down with a head torch on at this line and following up, and... Uh, and we did it. We did it on the second take. Hmm. Well, that's good. Uh, I um, wish we could do this show on the second take sometimes, but we can't. <laughs> we gotta go with the first. And sometimes we do it to that door. <laughs> Are um, any any of the costumes that you wore actually comfortable or anything? The Cybermen costumes weighed about four stone, which is oh. about... Sixty pounds, something like that. Wow! Uh, one of the guys, Ken, and kind of weighed himself just because he was curious. Um, so wearing those costumes all day long was was you know it was a workout, um, and also because they were made out of fiberglass, they were very inflexible. So mm-hmm. um, it was uh, yeah, it was the thing is it was almost worth wearing one of those for twelve hours a day to take it off at the end of the day. And feel four mm-hmm. stone lighter and uh, much more comfortable. But in saying that, we had uh, we had great fun playing the Cybermen. You know, you could imagine twelve guys in Cybermen costumes <laughs> sat around talking <laughs> talking all sorts of nonsense. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I think I think probably the most food, which was just a big foam latex mass that we pulled on over, over our heads. Um, sometimes they were so comfortable, you kind of ended up falling asleep inside of them. But yeah, no, the, um, the Daleks were great because you sat down, whereas uh, <laughs> many of the other costumes, it's quite difficult to actually rest and uh, and take the weight off of you. You know, while we're on the subject, actually, then I just want to ask: so, of of all the of all the costumes you've worn, uh, probably like the get into, and what would be what was like what took the longest uh, and or the most difficult to get into? Um, the easiest was well, I just said that it was just a big big foam yeah. later kind of um, almost like a set of overalls. The one that's the, the Whisper Men in the name of the Doctor that was a, a full prosthetic makeup which consisted of uh, having a bold cap glued to her head, uh, foam latex, um, sort of cheekbones, forehead and chin glued to our face, base layer, and then the detail was airbrushed in. Uh, and then a, 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 a lady's white stocking pulled over our heads and then the, the mouth was cut and then... And yeah, that took, that took three hours. So we started at four in the morning um, oh, around seven, and then it would take almost up to an hour to actually uh, try and rip the thing off of our face and glue and paint off. Um, mm. So I think the worst thing about that was that you couldn't breathe through your nose, so you had to breathe through your mouth all day long. Um, and also uh, the stocking squished your nose, so you kind of had a a flat bruised nose at the end of the day. Um, and also you, you practically couldn't see. So you spent 12 hours a day not being able to see and having to try and manoeuvre your way around a set without um, kicking Richard E. Grant in the shins. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, and then it is a very strange uh, thing because at the end of the day, when they take it off and you finally can see, it's it was almost like sensory deprivation. You know, you just had you had your sight back and it was almost too much to kind of uh, look at things. Um, but they were, they were very scary. And we had these, we had these like awful looking teeth, um, dentures almost. And uh, when we went to the canteen, which we share with some other BBC shows, including one called Casualty, which is like a hospital drama, mm -hmm. we would walk in there and quite a few of the uh, the lady nurses just couldn't be in the room with us, so they kind of had to, <laughs> had to run out. We did actually get banned from eating anything messy, because obviously if we would have got some, uh, <laughs> some tomato sauce on our, on our uh, stocking makeup, that would have ruined it. So it was, uh, it was drinking soup through a straw unfortunately it was normally chunky vegetables so that didn't really go <laughs> straw very well <laughs> or uh, or just dropping uh, dropping chips into our mouth like a uh, feeding <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> so yeah it's, it's all it's all glam in the uh, in the doctor who world a rundown of the episodes you've done and we, we've got enough to victory of the daleks so if you want to continue from there Sure. So after Victory of the Daleks, I did an episode called The Lodger where oh, um, yeah. they, mm -hmm. they were having the football match, um, and I was the uh, <clears throat> I was the goalkeeper on um, on the doctor's side, which basically meant I didn't really do a lot. And uh, oh yeah, there's a funny story actually. Football, or I guess obviously soccer, you call it. And I call it so, football. Um, I'm, I'm 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 European. I'm, I'm ah, football. cool. That's great. Yeah, you kick it with your foot. Yeah. Um, so up. So normally, what you do in in soccer, football, uh, you kind of make a make a circle, and then you just uh, keep kick the ball the other, and try and keep that going as long as possible. Mm -hmm. One of the guys kicked the ball to me, but he kicked it a little bit uh, weakly. So I kind of lunged for the ball, connected with the ball. And then uh, volleyed it Smith's um, <laughs> gentleman area. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> And then he, he obviously he was he collapsed to the floor and was rolling around in pain. And obviously I felt like a right idiot for doing that. Um, I was then late later on in another scene uh, which was in the call centre, mm -hmm. and I was actually sat next to Matt, and uh, he was sort of you know rehearsing and bounding around and being you know extremely excitable and uh he led back on his uh office chair and stretched his arms out but the uh 
the office chair back was set to actually recline. So oh. he reclined with his arms outstretched and then ended up um, clocking me on the nose. <laughs> and uh, he said, he said, right, I got you back now for the other day. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know okay. whether that was planned or not, but, um, but yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that was a uh, great fun. I then did the Pandorica Opens, which I, I think I think I was in that three times. You had the opening and River Song having their sort of some sort of a, a, a like bar, mm-hmm. um, and there's like some beaded curtains, and then there's a couple of guys uh, at the bar. I think we were arguing or something, um, but I'm wearing a white spacesuit, so I'm I'm kind of just like a blur in the background. Um, I then did. Um, the uh, one of the Daleks as well when the whole mob of mob of monsters, um, you know, sent sent the Doctor to the actual Pandorica, mm-hmm. um, and then uh, then I did what I think uh, my most favourite to who is I played the uh, the headless Cyberman that walks around the corner and then picks up his head. Oh. So um, uh, it was uh, there was there was if you go on YouTube and put in headless Pandora Cyberman, I think there's actually a video up there, and it, oh, I think I've actually put it on my website as well. So um, so the story goes is that the Cyberman had one of his arms missing, so they got a had arm missing to do the mm-hmm. scene, but Toby Haynes, who was directing it, couldn't or, or didn't have enough time to actually get the reveal of the Cyberman walking around the corner and actually picking up the head. Right. So. They basically did that as a pickup shot, but couldn't get the other actor back. So they got me along, and they uh, they basically put a green morph suit on me, and then the Cyberman costume over the top, Sam's right. Sam's head and arm. So I did the whole thing like that, and then with the magic of visual effects, uh, they uh, literally deleted my head and arm. And yeah, when you watch it, it's, it is great because a lot of people said, oh, I thought it was like a animatronic thing or, or CGI. <laughs> um, but um, but I added a little touch. I, I kind of thought of the practical real world and I thought, well, if I've got an arm missing, then I'm going to be slightly off balance. I thought we'll see him just leaning over slightly to one side and if um, if the director's not happy, then I'll correct it. So um Obviously, he was happy, and I'm I'm happy as well because I know I've added that little nuance that uh, is possibly what would happen if there was an arm missing on a robot. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, so that was um, that was uh, yeah, that was a uh, great fun doing that, and um, um, and especially having uh, the Doctor Who Confidential film the behind the scenes stuff as um, through my list. Um, a good man goes to war. I was right at the top of the show as Rory enters the Cyberman spaceship. Oh, that's a powerful scene. Yeah, it's it was great. It was great to be the cyber leader as well uh, with the mm-hmm. iconic um, the black handlebars and, uh, and the brain showing. Um, if you do watch it, 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 look at the actual top brain section, and it, mm-hmm. it looks a bit steamed up. Because basically, we shot the entire thing in a factory that was still running. Because normally, they look for a location that will look slightly futuristic, so they don't right. have to set dress a new factory. And it was exceptionally hot. So I, you know, we're baking away in our sideman costumes, and the and the heat from me has actually steamed up the uh, the Perspex brain dome, which is quite funny. Um, I was also a Jadoon in that as well, when they uh, basically have the big speech with all the uh, the, the clerics in that mm-hmm. huge, huge, great big hangar, and and I also played a, a cleric in in the same scene as well. Oh, there's a really nice little kind of um, well, they call used to call it the red button thing because they used to do a thing where a little red icon would come up on the screen if you press the red button on your remote, mm-hmm. you'd get extra content. And it was a scene, um, I think it was closing time. There was uh, basically a scene with Matt in the library. It, this, because I never really gotched it. It's like, why is River Song in an astronaut's costume? Um, but this little scene itself actually shows you what happened. So, uh, and a friend, of, we walk in as a couple of clerics and we have the astronaut costume and then 
grab Alex Kingston and then Knocker and Conscious up in the uh, costume. So another not another little sneak face. <laughs> um, uh, stop me anytime you want if you need to sort of interject any uh, any questions. Anyway, looking down. I- I'm enjoying this. It's the first time I get to do a show where I get to keep my mouth. Oh, oh you and you. Um, <laughs> well, this is well. Uh, you're oh, going on not- hiatus anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> we did the Asylum of the Daleks as well, which was um, which was fantastic. So there was a whole mob of us in various different Daleks in different states of mm-hmm. disrepair, and also uh, the Parliament of the Daleks scene as well. I was basically down on the big kind of white circle in the middle of the Parliament. Um, right. and Nick Peck was the other Dalek, and then Barnaby was playing uh, the Supreme Dalek. Um, so yeah, more more Dalek action. Um, most of the time was just I think there was about twenty of us there, and then they replicated them with us just texting all the Dalek and sending uh, <laughs> rude, rude jokes to each other. But what's always quite interesting is that if you actually stay still in a Dalek, no one knows you're actually in there. So people will be having conversations, and you could just eavesdrop on what <laughs> people were saying. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, sneaky peeping Tom Daleks going on on set there. I then briefly paid a unit soldier in the Bells of St. John, which was up in the up in the call centre scene, but that wasn't really sort of any action. Oh, the Rings of Ackerton. Mm-hmm. Um, I played one of the uh, the vigil, those kind of creepy, uh, creepy looking creatures that uh, kind of did the bidding of the uh, of the mummy. Right. Um, and those were, um, yeah, those were. Uh, brilliant fun to play yeah, actually, um, can i can i just uh I, I need to i need to ask a question about that um sure. because uh rings of akatan one of the uh one of the various aliens that's you know watching the whole thing going on looks a lot like a half uh and i've always just wondered is it was it supposed to be a half or did they just did somebody just grab like whatever costumes were available and just like okay we'll we'll take this we'll color it a different color it's a different alien yeah it was it was pretty much that it was um yeah it wasn't a half but it looked very much like it and millennium effects basically kind of you know put together various different costumes um uh and i think if you look if you look closely there was a couple of the characters and they were in the marketplace scene and the costumes suspiciously look like the, oh, uh, um, what were they called? Necro Necromongers from the uh, Chronicles of Riddick. Mm-hmm. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, I saw a commercial the other day, actually, with uh, someone wearing that. So, it, it you know, it, it carries on the, um, the age-old tradition of, of recycling costumes and obviously famously... Um, the uh, the costume of um, Bosk from Star Wars was actually used in Doctor Who uh, previously to that. So um, uh, you know, re- recycling is always is always good. Also saves a saves a bundle on the budget. Yeah, yeah, it's it's um, you know, it, there's a lot of production value in that show, and you know, wherever you can, <coughs> uh, you know repurpose uh stuff that it doesn't look too obvious then it's um is uh definitely the way forward um yeah then after that was the uh the name of the doctor where we played the, uh, the whisper men that i touched on earlier mm-hmm. so that was uh that was great fun uh, there was four of us i think we did five days in a row um and yeah by the end of the week um we were quite tired and our skin wasn't in the greatest of condition, but uh, that's the uh, that's the glory of being a being a monster and being in prosthetics. Um, after that, oh, day of the Doctor. So the uh, the fiftieth episode, um, uh, I played one of the uh, the Daleks in the Time War right at the very top of the show, mm-hmm. which was great fun. That was actually filmed in a trading estate near Ponty Pool in Wales, mm-hmm. um, which has been used for. Oh, Blimey, it's been used for loads. It was used for the Sontaran Stratagem, the the um, the Ood episodes. Um, it, it's basically a disused warehouse. So anything right. previous to that that looked like a disused warehouse. Oh, Voyage of the Damned, the 
the Max Capricorn scene, that was all filmed there as well. Hmm. So they they build this enormous outside set, and uh, we we came trundling down a, a kind of compacted dirt path in the Daleks and uh, did our scene. And then when we had to reset, we had to kind of go back uphill. And Daleks and going uphill doesn't always kind of uh, marry up very well. But um, but yeah, it was uh, it was really special to uh, be a part of that. And um, it did look pretty awesome. I also played a unit soldier as well in that scene. So when the uh, Doctor and Clara walk into the uh, gallery with the uh, big painting of the 10th Doctor, if you, well, it's also on my website, but if you actually look at the scene, as they walk in, there's two unit soldiers uh, on the outside, and I'm on the left. And then when they do the reverse shot, there's two unit soldiers by the painting. And if you look at the right, it's, uh, it's me again. So, um, yeah, Re- repurposing, um, you know, human bodies is is very good. And then I had a kind of sneaky cameo appearance in the under gallery scene. So they go to the under gallery and they've got the statues or what they thought of the statues with the shrouds over their heads, which were Zygons. Uh, but there were only two Zygons, which were played by Aidan Cook and Paul Casey. But they wanted the appearance that there were probably six so uh, uh, me and the other guys who were dressed as unit soldiers basically mm-hmm. jumped under the shrouds. So if you watch that scene, if you look on the le- the right-hand side uh, at the front where I was, if you look at the top of the shroud, it suspiciously looks exactly the same shape as a unit soldier helmet because <laughs> that's what it was. Um, so I kind of made a sort of um, clandestine appearance uh, in that scene. Then a Dalek again in the time of the Doctor in Christmas Town. Which was pretty challenging because they had uh, they had fake snow on the floor, mm-hmm. which is pretty much just paper mache. They they mix small part paper particles and water together and just spray the floor. Uh, and there was a scene where we had to go past the Dalek, which was basically going uphill on a unkept road with fake snow. And the Daleks basically are just like snow plows, so we we just basically had to just try and stand up as much as possible and push those things past the camera john i have a question for you 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 were on set when prince charles came weren't you yes they had a they had a royal visit of the bbc studios and they basically wanted to just put a presentation on I, i don't know why but um so there was various different things going on and then um me and a few of the other guys were uh, dressed up as monsters there was a a couple of daleks there was my friend jamie uh hill who played the the silence he was there and mm-hmm. my other friend uh simon carew who, who played um a cyberman and i was dressed as a nude and uh they were kind of walking down the line of us and uh and camilla uh stood up to me and grabbed my tentacles <laughs> <laughs> i had to enunciate there and she said i remember these horrible things and I, at the time i was like i'm not really sure how to take that and i don't really know where she remembers them from <laughs> um but there's a there's a, a very lovely picture that the um ended up on the daily mirrors website of her her actually tentacle tickling so uh <laughs> so yeah it's, it's all fun and games and um i've done quite a few live events i've also done uh there was a show called doctor who live back in i think 2011 mm-hmm. which was a it was a st- it was like a stage traveling stage show it was an arena show right. and um the They couldn't get Matt Smith because, obviously, he was filming the show, but a great actor called Nigel Planer, who's Mm. um, been in all sorts of things. Yeah, the young young ones was the sort of big break back in the day. Um, He was a like a travelling kind of showman called Vorgensen, uh, son of Vorg, which is obviously a throwback to Carnival of the Monsters, Mm -hmm. is it? Mm -hmm. Um, And he would come out on stage and he would say... You know, look at me, aren't I wonderful? And he had a glove on which was a minimizer, and he minimized the monsters, and then he could bring them out at will to show the the 
paying audience then obviously in true doctor Who style it all goes wrong the monsters escape and it was um yeah it was brilliant it was a, it was a great story and um with rehearsals and performing i think that was two months uh wow. on the road and just just actually doing something live when you're in a costume and you're seeing the fans and you're getting the reaction straight away it is you know so special it's, it's amazing working on the show but you don't exactly know what you're doing or are you doing it right and mm-hmm. you gotta then wait six months to see the scene. So doing that event was was really special and um all the all the people working on it just had a had an absolute blast. Um and then the other live events uh after that were the Dot Two Proms in two thousand and thirteen mm-hmm. at the Royal Albert Hall, which I played uh, a Whisper Man. Um then the um, Doctor Who Symphonic Spectacular, which was a similar type of thing where there's a full orchestra playing the music. Peter Davison was hosting the show. Yes. Various monsters would come out and then the, they would play the music live, which hearing, hearing an orchestra playing the music for Doctor Who Live is just, uh, it's just mind blowing. Um, wow. You know, literally you just get chills going down your neck. And a I think I think we this was in Australia and I think it was possibly Sydney. Uh they did a rehearsal and uh they played the the song from the Christmas ep- episode that Catherine Jenkins sang. Mm-hmm. And there was a this big burly security guard by the uh by the sound booth and it had finished and <laughs> he was crying. It was just absolutely uh, amazing, you know. It's just uh testament to the power of the uh, power of the music of doctor who um so yeah that was amazing i did i did two stints in australia new zealand doing the symphonic spectacular um traveling around i think we went to mm. brisbane melbourne sydney adelaide and perth um but that was um that was that was very special and you know just getting to see all of these places as well was just a uh, just an amazing opportunity. Um, they then did, you know, I think, in 2015, uh, a similar tour in the UK as well. There was the uh, the Doctor Who Festival, which was in Excel in London, mm-hmm. the big uh, the big official uh, BBC Doctor Who show, which was great. And I I came out on stage as a, a Maya Warrior, which was from the uh, the Girl Who Died episode with Maisie Williams. Did a little stomp around the stage in front of. Uh, Kate Walsh, uh, who uh, works for Millennium Effects, um, right. uh, and obviously Mark uh, Gatiss as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then um, uh, my good friend, uh, Stephen Cranford, who was hosting the show, said, and uh, obviously underneath every mask is a hideous creature, and then they asked, unmasked me, and <laughs> I revealed <laughs> my face. Um, so... Uh, yeah, that was great fun, and then I spent the rest of the day on the uh, stand for Millennium Effects, and all the fans were coming up and trying on the different different parts of the costumes. And uh, yeah, went down went down the storm. Um, yeah. So so yeah, so not not only just on the show, but getting getting out and about, down and dirty, and uh, and taking the uh, Doctor Who to the public. Um, oh, there's yeah, there's a few more on the list to go through. So um, the first. Peter Capaldi uh, episode was Deep Breath, where I played one of the uh, one of the droids in the the half man chamber, which was great fun. And obviously, getting to meet um, Peter for the first time was mm-hmm. was uh, pretty cool. Then Death in Heaven, I played a unit soldier as well. So the scene where they're outside and the Cybermen fly out of St Paul's Cathedral, mm-hmm. um, I'm there. Um, and uh, when Missy gets knocked unconscious, me and my other friend um, Pete grab hold of her and drag her off. Oh, lucky fact, you! Lucky yeah, you. I know. Yeah. Well, lucky me is what I thought. But the, the <laughs> very first take and what was written in the script was um, something like: Missy gets knocked unconscious. Uh, a unit soldier catches her, picks her up, and walks her off. So we uh, did the first take. This was directed by Rachel uh, Tulane. Yeah. Tulane. Tulane. Um, <laughs> and she said, it kind of looks like they've just got married and they're walking over the threshold and then changed it. <laughs> the two of us. 
And I think we probably shot that whole scene maybe 20 times. And I know Come that on. Michelle Gomez oh. is, is a very fit and, you know, svelte lady. But I think right. if I would have had to have done that whole thing of picking her up and walking off with her 20 times, it would have been a little bit too much. Um, I then end up on the uh, the aeroplane when uh, when Missy is uh, is on the gurney and she turns mm. around and vaporizes us. So um, I got a nice on screen death, which was Aww, amazing. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> uh, um, and then yeah, back in the Daleks with the Magician's Apprentice and Witch's Familiar, which was amazing. And also seeing Peter in the Davros chair was just um, oh, was been, just oh, incredible. Yeah. And it was just like, oh my god, this is so good, and I can't <laughs> tell anyone. But wait until they see it. There was a couple of things cut out of that episode, which there are a lot of things that are cut out of episodes. There was one, and it was something like when the Doctor had stolen. Davros's wheelchair, I guess you could call it. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it is actually based on an electric wheelchair. Davros's voice comes across the uh, the PA system, and he says something on the lines of, um, "Doctor, you'll never get away. I'm going to get you." And then, uh, and then Peter turns around and says, "Really?" He said, "You'll just spend hours crawling around in circles." <laughs> which um, <laughs> oh. I thought was, I thought was hilarious, but yeah, that that got omitted from the final cut. Yeah, um, <laughs> and then and then there was another scene where I think the Doctor's doing a. It's either the Doctor or it's either Davros was doing another kind of speech over the PA, and they basically filmed a load of shots. Um, and it was supposed to be the camera dropping down through the Dalek city. So they kind of had a jib and they were dropping the camera down then it would go to another floor and it would mm-hmm. just show the various life of uh, Daleks and what they get up to on the ship. And there was one scene and it was basically in a chamber and um, um, oh, it's really annoying me now, the director, and I can't remember her name. She directed Blink. Um, oh, um... H- Hetty... Is it Hetty... Oh, I can't remember, oh, this. Can't remember name. Oh, I feel terrible for that. Anyway, she she basically said she said like, oh, what do you think we could be doing here? And um, and I think I think Nick Pay comes up with something like, well, we could be kind of you know there'd be a Dalek in the middle, there'd be a few Daleks around them doing maintenance. So um, so the shot played out that the camera comes down from the roof and you see Hedy one Dalek McDonald. In the Hetty McDonald, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. lovely lady. She's absolutely amazing. So the shot plays out. There's a Dalek in the middle. The camera jibs down. And you see, I think, three or four Daleks around the Dalek in the middle. And we've all got our plungers (laughs) connected to the hemispheres of the other Dalek because they are Mm -hmm. basically the same size. And then we look up as if we're listening to the... uh, the audio being uh, spoken to us, and then we slowly pull our plungers away. And then afterwards, we, we kind of thought, probably what's happened is there's this room that things are going on, and we're kind of slightly embarrassed <laughs> over what we're doing. <laughs> 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 I'd, 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 love, I'd love to see the footage of that, because, um, you know, that, that was just such an amazingly uh, great scene. But unfortunately, like with everything, they you know, you have to cut things down for it to make sense mm-hmm. um then uh leading on from that was the uh the maya warrior that i spoke of earlier in the the girl who died episode and those mm-hmm. were absolutely amazing costumes that millennium effects made i think they only had a turnaround of two weeks to build those five costumes and they were built out of um of plastizo uh which is like a, a packaging foam a dense packaging foam that cosplayers have been using for years to make mm-hmm. costumes and uh and Kate kind of said, well, we're making stuff out of fiberglass and vac form and, you know, the the costuming community are making their stuff out of plaster. So why don't we do it? So it was very nice that they kind of went, oh, in fact, the fans are doing this. Let's use, um, you know, similar techniques to and materials that they use. So, yeah, it was very good that they were made out of um, foam because they would have been exceptionally heavy. There's a nice funny story as well because literally the costumes weren't ready until the first day of shooting. They had built the interior of the Viking Lodge on a same stage and they hadn't seen the total height of the mire. And we had these huge great big aerials on the back of us, which meant that we couldn't actually walk through the door. 
so it's kind of square peg round hole situation going on. So what happened was we we shot this scene where the 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 door bursts open. We have to kick the door in. We then march up to the door. They'll do do something called a tape roll, which the camera will keep filming, but it will actually be like a theoretical cut. We then have to bend backwards and limbo dance under the door in these Maya costumes, and uh, and basically one of the uh, one of the ads was giving us instructions because he couldn't see. He would say, "And Maya, limbo, 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 clear," and then we could stand back <laughs> up again. So uh, yeah, so that would uh, that was that was all great fun, and uh, there is some hilarious footage on the cutting room floor of. Uh, that actually happening um the zygon inversion i played a policeman when um the doctor comes off of the beach i'm sat in the police car having a mm. good staring contest uh with uh with peter which was uh brilliant fun <laughs> um briefly paid a jadoon in the face of raven which was my shortest time on set ever um there was uh it was in trap street and there was like a couple of security guards and then Briefly, you kind of, I don't know whether there's a perception filter or something, but they are actually Jadoon. So literally, uh, me and and my friend Matt, we walk on to set. um, They get the camera, shoot for 10 seconds and go, right, you're done. So, um, yeah, shortest day ever. Um, The Husbands of River Song, um, I played uh, a character in a full prosthetic Unfortunately, you don't really see me. I'm actually sat behind River Song uh, in the restaurant scene. Um, the return of Doctor Mysterio. Um, I play one of the drones on the spaceship. Um, so you see these two two drones with half their head missing uh, and bald heads, uh, kind of step out and then walk up to the cockpit, and then uh, Nardole gets strangled. That was me with half of my head painted green. With the magic of television, they were decap. I think there's a familiar theme going on here with having my head lopped off on Doctor Who. But uh, I'm the man for the job, I guess. The pilot episode, I played uh, played various Daleks in that. Oxygen, uh, one of the corpses, the space corpses that you see stomping around inside the space station, which was amazing fun. I did a little bit as a UN soldier in the pyramids of Mars where I'm mm-hmm. just literally sat in the briefing, stood in the briefing room and uh, lie of the land where I play one of the memory police officers, which kick in the door and arrest the woman and drag her off. There was that scene was longer and cut down again. And originally they go in and find a shoebox full of lots of contraband all banned stuff, which would remind the humans of, the you know the real reality and she's kind of going through this um shoe box and she picks up an audio cd and she looks at it and she goes west life <laughs> <laughs> which i'm not too sure if you're familiar with the, the yes, boy band yes, west life yes. but uh that that was a really funny moment but like with anything they have to uh they have to cut it down to um to fit um and yeah and that's um to date that is the the last thing that I've done on the show. Well, we have to mention you've done Sarah Jane in Torchwood. Oh God, yeah, I forgot about those. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were oh, getting on because it's an hour, and you thought you were getting off. We were going to say goodbye to you, but no, we're we're going to keep you on a little longer. Sarah Jane. No, I'll, I'll I'll quickly go through those. So, um, Torchwood, I played a soldier in the uh, Children of Earth episode. There was mm-hmm. um, there's a scene where. Um, where Eve Miles walks into a, a big sports hall and there's little body bags on the floor. And uh, I do get a line. It's, I don't know, it's almost as good as my Atmos worker line. I basically point and say 13, 14. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so I think they found, my, they found my range for dialogue on Doctor Who very well there. <laughs> um, and then, um, yeah, the... Um, Sarah Jane Adventures. I've very important you... episodes you did on Sarah Jane Adventures. Sorry? You did very important episodes of Sarah Jane Adventures. Yes. Um, Pivotal I played the unit, so, unit soldier a couple of times, but then I also was in um, the costume, the Shan Sheath costume, 
big kind of turkey vulture looking mm-hmm. thing. Now, um, that was actually, that was basically like a big hand puppet. So Paul Casey was playing the Shan Sheath and his arm was up controlling the neck. Right. He then had his other arm free. And most of the scenes, they kind of did a bit of a Napoleon thing with the fake arm of the Shan Sheath. But then there was a couple of scenes. There's one where the Shan Sheath was playing a harp. And then when the TARDIS a- appeared, he was banging on the TARDIS door and mm. playing the console. So they needed a an extra arm. So I was that arm. Oh, cool. So I basically, <laughs> I had to... I had to go under the uh, the cloak and basically rugby tackle Paul Casey and then sort of slide my arm through so it's the same length as his arm. And especially in the scene where he's banging on the TARDIS console, literally, I'm just running around underneath the cloak, not being able to see, just kind of flailing my arm around to uh, give the appearance that um, that it's, uh, you know, a two-handed Shang-Chi, not a big... Um, sock puppet so <laughs> so that was probably yeah probably the weirdest thing that i've done in the canon of doctor who and then i've also briefly appeared in class as well mm-hmm. um, the very first episode the shadow kin appears in the bedroom right um but they shot that scene but the costumes i don't think were finished yet so i did the entire scene in a in a green morph suit um, with a couple of swords um, kind of having this fight and then they uh, overlaid a, a, a scary Shadowkin afterwards. Andy Serkis made a career out of it, so I, I'll take that, but, you know, that is me. Yeah. Albeit Andy Serkis is um, obviously far more talented than me, but uh, but it was it was good, which has mean that I've actually been in every single... Yeah, you, you hit the quad vector. I guess. Yeah, quad the, sector. Well, the, the, <laughs> well the, the Doctor Who version of an EGOT. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but you were also in Rogue One, a Star Wars story, weren't you? I was, yes. Unfortunately, I didn't get on there to do any of the creature stuff. Um, however, I was in the, uh, as a villager in the Jeddah village scene. Oh. Um, just as a villager, kind of wandering around in the background when Jin and Cassian are kind of walking up just before they meet Donnie Yen's character. Mm-hmm. Um, but to be fair, it was it was just an absolute privilege to be on set and actually just <laughs> marvel at the, you know, well, marvel at the budget <laughs> yeah, <laughs> compared, to, oh my compared to TV stuff. Um, yeah, no, it was fantastic. I, did, I probably did about four days on that. And it was... It was a gloriously beautiful, warm, sunny day, which is very rare in Britain. So, uh, um, yeah, it, it was it was great. And um, it was very special for me as well, because my other line of work is uh, I'm a still photographer and filmmaker and DAP and camera operator. So literally getting to go on set like that, most of my time was spent just just checking out how they how they do things so you know it all adds to my uh tool belt of various things uh, that i yeah. do um but yeah i'll just i'll just briefly touch on on that work i've i spent i think seven years with uh, a company called collision films in bristol where i worked shooting mm-hmm. music promo video which we've shot stuff for the scissor sisters um really Radiohead, Head, the killers yeah. the bees yeah it was um that was the first thing i worked on it was um it was uh there there from hell to the thief album which a weird little kind of stop motion woodland scene with animals kind of having tea parties and stuff i was actually hired by my good friend sue gent who was a producer to be a runner on that and then when i was chatting to the guys i was telling them about my photography experience and digital photography was fairly new back in 2003 and they were trying to decide how to shoot the stop motion and we kind of came to the decision like well can't we just shoot it on a digital stills camera and then load that into after effects and would that work and i said yeah yeah that will work so they said oh do you want to try it out it did work um and then i got kind of promoted to camera operator for the uh the stop motion stuff um so yeah so that was great and and interestingly enough that is how they shoot all stop motion animation is using a digital slr and just shooting still frames so um 
I was quite honoured to have uh, kind of just gone, you know what, sod it, let's do it. Let's not talk about it or have a meeting. Let's just <laughs> do it. And, and it happened. So we did that for about seven years. Then the music industry obviously was in quite a weird place because obviously what with the internet and budgets and stuff. So all the guys went off and started doing their their own thing. And then the uh, director I worked with, Chris Hopewell, he... He then had a meeting uh, with a guy called Stanley Donwood, who's an artist who also does the artwork for Radiohead. And he said that they've got a new album coming out. And did he fancy doing a little weird 30 second thing to go out on Instagram? And Chris said, yeah, he said, I've, I've, I've always had this idea of doing the Camberwick Green Witch Trials. And Camberwick Green was a quintessential British animation from the early 70s and then stanley said to him he said wow he said that's kind of weird because one of the tracks is called burn the witch so um serendipity kind of stepped in and you know they had a meeting then got very drunk in my friend's bar in bath um and uh yeah then basically chris said to them he said how about we just make a whole music video because the amount of production just to make 30 seconds we may as well shoot a whole music video so we then shot the Burn the Witch video, which got loads of publicity because Radiohead withdrew all of their social media presence. And there was right. kind of, it just ironically enough, made them more visible on social media because they didn't have social media presence. So um, <laughs> it's, it's obviously some thinking behind that. And then, yeah, then we started shooting music promos again. So we did one for Avenged Sevenfold called The Stage which was a marionette puppet show. Mm -hmm. um, another video for Father John Misty. And most recently, a video for Run the Jewels called Don't Get Captured. Oh. So um, uh, cool. stop motion animation is still still in my blood and thriving cool. well. And hopefully there should be some more things in the pipeline soon. And, and speaking of that, what's coming up for John Davy in the future? What's, what, what can we look for you in? Uh, not unemployment. I'm not sure at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> unemployment. Um, yes, I'm. I'm looking I'm not... forward to unemployment. Um, no. <laughs> I, I quite enjoy sporadic unemployment because I, you know, you can't work too hard because it will just be too much like hard work. Um, yeah, uh, this show's been hard work for six years, so this is the last one for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I haven't really done anything in front of the camera this year, but I've got lots of uh, video and photography projects on the go and lots of conventions to go to as well. But yeah, no, I absolutely love it and absolutely love the uh, American fans because it's just, um, yeah, it's basically a big party, mm -hmm. uh, a big drinking party as well on the evening. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love coming, love chatting about my stories and showing my photographs. And I've I've now done a little PowerPoint presentation. For, it's about forty five minutes an hour long about behind the scenes on Doctor Who. Did you um, did you see my presentation at Gallifrey One? Yes, I did. Cool. You sound very no, no. no I, I I really was into it. <laughs> You're amazing. I, I am oh, so glad you. we had you on the show. But yes, the, the 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 panel that you did was really really good. Why don't you tell everyone about it? Well, basically, I did a. Um, I would probably say it was almost a semi stand up routine PowerPoint presentation about behind the scenes on Doctor Who, and I had various photographs from the show and also the ones that I've done in Australia and the live events. And just talking through it and uh, basically explaining what happened and funny little bits and pieces that went on on set. And I was very fortunate because I was losing my voice after the... <laughs> um, like me right now. <laughs> yeah, it was... It was, it was um, I sounded like Clancy Brown from uh, Highlander. <laughs> <laughs> it was getting that low. And it, this was after he had his throat cut by Sean Connery. In fact, the day after Lick that, down, I lost yeah. my voice totally. I, and, you know, I had to go and hire a car and I was just whispering at them. But, uh, but yeah, no, I, 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 I think it went down very well. It and, did. Um, it really it was I very funny. It was very funny. I performed a little song that I have written as well. Uh, that I yeah, I saw that, the A to Z, A to Z song. Yeah, that was it was really good. It was, I, yeah, it would take forever to learn that. 
Oh my gosh! It, well, <laughs> it, I'm still learning it. Well, what it what it was based on was uh, Daniel Radcliffe was on the Jimmy Fallon show and he performed Alphabet Aerobics by Black Alicious, mm-hmm. uh, which is a, a very very complicated rap song. And I thought, oh, wouldn't it be really cool if you could do one like that, but with Doctor Who monsters? And then I started writing it, and I kind of went through kind of the easy ones. I thought, right, I have to name the character, but then only use words to describe the character with the first letter of that character's name. So I kind of did that for a couple of days, and then I just thought, what am I doing? This is just insane, and it was driving me mad. I had had the TARDIS wiki and the... uh, and a thesaurus and a dictionary and uh, it, it it drove me mad so i kind of left it on the back burner but then the uh, the doctor who experience the the big kind of exhibit in cardiff mm-hmm. was closing down and uh, i i had a word of them because i've worked there a few times doing uh, live performances and said oh can i film this thing and basically be next to the characters that i'm talking about because i just thought oh that's, that would just look great um so i did it and then um yeah, edited it all together, and then the Doctor Experience closed, and then eventually I, I put it out on social media, and the, very kindly, my friend Tony Perna, who runs the social media in Australia, I sent it to him, and I think he then sent it to the social media guys in the UK, and they stuck it on the uh, official Doctor Who Facebook page. But I've um, I've done an instrumental version with just the lyrics that you can download, and, you know, I want people to do it, and actually perform their version so anyone listening out there if you basically uh, go to the uh, my youtube page you can download the instrumental all the lyrics are there and uh you can do it yourself all right did you want me to attempt to do it uh <laughs> you know what before you do before you attempt to do it i want to bring on someone who's sitting in the green room mr jeremy raddick uh gareth from the tv movie jeremy hello can you hear me hi jeremy yes we can hear you jeremy i want jeremy to hear this too jeremy I... uh, is a friend of the show we invited him he's going to be the last guest so that you're not the last guest okay, <laughs> ah, good. okay. so right. he's he's going to be the he's going to be the malcolm mcdowell who kills captain kirk yeah yeah <laughs> hey, jeremy okay. is not <laughs> mcdowell but what, uh, let, let's a, hear this an honor let's hear the a to z a to z excuse okay. me okay it's 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 going to be um it's going to be a cappella because I don't have the inst- or can't figure out how to do play the instrumental. Um, okay. So uh, <clears throat> let me cl- let me clear my throat. <laughs> I've been talking for an hour already, so I'm yes. going to be a little bit out of breath. On Easter Sunday, in fact. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So. Absorbal off absorbing allies available, adolescent adipose atrophy attainable, bokine breathing billion year barrowman, boneless bidimensional Banksy S bitumen, cat kind concealing the cure for contagion, cyber cybermen converting the cranium, Daleks delivering diabolical destruction, Davros designer, dictator, disruptor, Eliza eternally entangled excavation, emoji bot excited by every extermination. Foretold frightening, fair goes faster. Future kind, ferocious, fleeing fifth master. Gallifrey's guarding with greatness good going. Great intelligence, Gandalf and Grant all knowing. Hath handles hate from having his history. Headless monks, heretics, hounded by delivery. Ice warrior, infiltrator are in fact inside. Iceless, ionic power, scribbled image resides. Jangle fest, jaws jammed by the brave journalist. Jadun jowl gibberish, japes with the Joneses. Cantafari dream crab clinging to forgetfulness. K1, Kettlewell, kill Gareth, killing mess. Lazy Kaz lending Lucretia style scam. Laszlo looks like a Lincolnshire lawman. Maya meets Maisie, medieval mayhem. Mr. Sweet, mysterious, manipulate the brainstem. Nesting nervous, nibbling neurosis. Nymons never full, nom nom network myth. Udon side and occasionally oppressed. Or Grons ordered, organize the obsessed. Pig slave picking products for procedure. Peg dolls panicking. People in prop keeper. Quark quickly kills all quarrelling quotes. Queen bat milk quells the quarantine antidote. Red Ragnos refusing relocation rudely. Richard Lazarus rejuvenation unready. Silent sighting scribbled very secretly. Sotar and Strax similarities seemingly. Tall teller trouble telekinetic torture. T Rex trampling in Thames turgid water. Unit united under uniformity, Uvondi urgency, unhinged uncertainty. 
Vashta vanquishing victims in the verges, vigil violent with value verses. Whispermen Walter wrecked in the resting place, wind as wire puller ward off the worst case. X mystery extermination endings extra. Zerafin of Zarafas, Zylot Zyster. Yana yelling at Utopian Young, Yeti yomping yards of yellow yak yarn. Zapping <laughs> zombies in Zero Senesone. Zygon, overzealous, Z lot, Xenophobe! Wow, that was that was good. Wow. I, I hope you didn't mind that uh, with my West Country accent um, slang on it as well. But no, uh, it was no, that made it, that made it better. That yeah. that works for me. So it's basically A to Z of Doctor Who monsters. If you go to my Facebook or Instagram, which is at John Davy 7 J O N D A V E Y 7 or on YouTube, you can then link to an instrumental version which has the lyrics on there and do it. Go for it. This is yeah. the, my first attempt at rhyming or rapping or singing or whatever it is i've just done so <laughs> if i if i can do it anyone can do it <laughs> okay nice that was great john i want to thank you so much for coming on our show we really appreciate it you're welcome i, I hope i just didn't kind of you know just talk and <laughs> no and no it was whole great this well. was this is one of our best shows i loved it we we talked about all Mark Who 42 of the episodes that you did. So, yeah. Hey, <laughs> I'll have to call it the Mark Who 42 episodes now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I like that. All right. John Great Davey, stuff. the man behind the monsters on Doctor Who. Thank you so much, uh, John. Thank you very much for having me on, and I'm, I'm sure we'll um, catch up soon in the States. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Take care. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 We hope you liked that interview with John Davey that we did with him on April 1st, 2018, live here on Mark Who 42. But you know what? It's not Mark Who 42 anymore. In fact, starting next week, we will be life, the Hooniverse, and everything with Mark Who 42. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm Mark Baumgarten. And, oh, I, I think saying... Ooh, I, I, I'm, I, I, I don't want to go, but I won't be gone for long. We'll be regenerated in a new form, just like Jody did, and we'll be talking about Jody Whitaker with our special guest next week on our first show of the actual show, Jeremy Raddick, who was actually our final final guest on that April first episode. We're gonna have him. We're gonna talk about Jody Whitaker. Next time, and yes, I think the regeneration is starting. Bye, folks. Marku forty two has just regenerated into life, the Hooniverse, and everything with Mark Who 42. This show was written and presented by Mark Baumgarten, Patricia Fryer, Iggy Matthews, and Zion Kiros with special guest John Davey. Life, the Hooniverse, and everything with Mark Who 42 is owned and copyrighted by Mark Baumgarten 2018.